Here we go. What is going on, Cover One crew? Welcome back to the show. Hope everybody is good, man. Today, we're keeping down the path of rookie wide receivers, talking power rankings for these wide receivers. I got my top five right now as we sit today. I mean, it is a fluid event. Some of these guys will jump above the other, you know, when we get closer to the NFL draft. But I'm pretty comfortable as we sit today in ranking these gentlemen as I see them fit. There are It's a supremely talented wide receiver draft class. There is no question about that extremely deep you will get some uh, high quality playmaking talent on day three of the nfl draft there is no question what do you say we start with number five it is brian thomas from lsu he is my fifth ranked wide receiver at this point i understand a lot of people are gonna you know uplift him maybe even to number four and it, it, the top three are pretty much set in stone at this point so it is who's four who's five to make this list round out a little bit more size is great i mean they college had him listed at six foot five i mean in the combine listed him two inches shorter six three two oh nine he's a put together wide receiver one you're definitely looking for 38 contests 127 receptions almost 2,000 yards 1897 14.9 on the average and a Nice 24 touchdown receptions. He popped on the scene, man. I mean, it was basically why the, the biggest mind F for me, if you know what I'm talking about, is why did Brian Thomas take so long to break out? Took him all the way to the third year to break out. Sometimes players, you know, it just it takes a little bit for them to click. I mean, in the Kelly offense at LSU, they did find their stride this past season, including guys like Malik Neighbors and a Jaden Daniels. They were absolutely lights out. Lightning speed for his size, no question about it. He ran, what, a 4-3-3 four, uh, four, three, three at the combine for a guy who's 6'3", 209. Sign me up all day long for those wheels. He can play inside, outside, which is very good, very unique, and he will be able to at least, you know, potentially challenge to be the wide receiver one on and offense eventually in the NFL he's just he's a little bit raw on certain tendencies but he is very good very good release off the line a jam is not an issue footwork is very good as well great shake for his size you see it in the open field you see it when he's coming uh, right off the line taking his route especially on those slants especially on those sevens he is very good in this respect man good shake for his size not gonna wow you like say someone like Tank Dell but he's got very good shake for that size no question man fantastic ball tracker and ball skills man he's gonna make plays for you down the field over the shoulder extremely solid end zone tosses back shoulder fades are definitely there for a brian thomas let all the fbs in touchdowns in 2023 with 17 baby and i mean okay it goes to the point as well you got to put a little bit of a marker on it saying playing beside somebody like malik neighbors is definitely going to open up your case and your cause to get open and catch the football but he was making plays when called upon he is a very good wide receiver like i said raw tendencies and he can't give up on plays at times but I think that could be ironed out with some solid coaching in the NFL number four Xavier Worthy my guy and I get it a lot of y'all gonna be like you're crazy how are you gonna rank Xavier Worthy at number four I'm smitten I've always been smitten with his game even going back to his days as a freshman he was so good Yes, there are things he's got to round out in his game, but he is so good, and it's not just because of the combine speed that he did do, but he does stand 5'11", 165. Biggest knocker on him right now, 165 soaking wet. He needs to add a little bit more weight to that frame, but 5'11's just fine for me. 39 games, 197 receptions, 2755 in yards, 14 on the average, and 26 touchdowns, man. He's not just a one, you know, deep threat, and that's all he can do. This guy can do a lot on the field, and we talk about his world-class wheel man you're not going to get anybody faster in this NFL draft if you're drafting based on pure speed you're getting Xavier Worthy 100% early in this first round he should be a first round pick in my opinion just based on those wheels but I mean NFL uh, you know teams and scouting departments <clears throat> they they are a little bit you know uh, uh, pausing when it comes to just speed because we see guys like John Ross who did break the combine as well and then didn't turn out to be a good wide receiver Xavier Worthy is not a John Ross by any stretch of the imagination Broke that combine record of 4.21 as he ran that second one and ran faster on the second one. Very productive throughout his collegiate career. I think that's something you definitely got to highlight. Almost 200 receptions and almost 2,800 yards and found the end zone more often than not. When you see his average at 14, you know he's doing more, uh, you know, all over.
over the field rather than just going deep because then that average should be in the 19s to 20s if he's only being utilized as that deep threat. Strength is better than most believe. Good drop shoulder, especially on the screens. He's got a good arm to push off tacklers and would-be defenders. Xavier Worthy is that good in that respect. A lot of people comping him to somebody like a Deshaun Jackson. I don't hate that comp whatsoever because he is a very good wide receiver. Will he ever be a wide receiver one in this league? Probably not, but he is so good that he can be a uh, exceptional wide receiver two, not only pulling coverage away from your wide receiver one, but making big time plays on the field. Route tree's above average for me right now, and I think it's good. It can definitely improve. He does a lot of things well. The slants, the digs, the, the crossers, and then the screen passes and then, uh, of course, going deep and taking the top off of a defense. He can do it all very well. Yak ability is top end. You get the ball in this man's hands, he's going to make plays down the field like nobody's business. But he does have some drops. We will say that. I cannot, you know, preach up all the positivity for an Xavier Worthy without saying he does have something of a dropping problem. He did fix it up this past year. Percentages did go down against the drop rate, but he definitely needs to clean that up. Put a couple more 100,000 uh, reps on the jug machine. Yes, I said 100,000. He's got to work it out on the jugs machine and uh, clean up those drops. I think it is also to do with the fact that he's always looking to turn up field and then he does uh, lose concentration on the ball. But there, there were some pretty ugly drops in his film. But Xavier Worthy, to me, definitely warranting a number four spot, in my opinion, because he is that talented and could be a game record. No question, man. Roma Dunzie, number three for me. Rome is a very good talent, man. 6'3", 212 is the stature. Very well put together. Wide receiver, 40 games, 214 receptions, 3272 in yards, 15.3 on the average, and a nice 24 touchdowns for Mr. Adunzie. Also, he is an elite-level wide receiver prospect, seeing a lot of people comping him to the Larry Fitzgerald mode. I see a little bit of a better Keenan Allen if we're going to talk about NFL comps in this respect. I think he is that good in that respect. His route tree is very good. Great size and frame. Fluid running style, like you saw even at the combine and that's why you want to watch the combine to understand what these guys do extremely well the fluidity in the run game the uh, you know no wasted motions him doing the gauntlet drill was a thing of beauty man hugging that line and just looking extremely poison fluid down that line absolutely fantastic body control is definitely elite in my respect he's gonna make plays for you whether it be the back shoulder fade out jumping the defensive backs or going down the field he can contort his body very well it is elite in that sense technically sound just a playmaker man is he the flash on the pen type of guy that's gonna break you away with the wheels no that's not what Roma Dunze is he's fast enough a 445 in the 40 is good tape speed does translate also and he's very versatile man you could use him everywhere outside slots screens he will get open for you that's why I'm saying it is similar to a Keenan Allen in those respects while I do understand the Larry Fitzgerald comp where he does do uh, you know exceptionally well in the end zone mismatch plays so you could give him a call him Keenan Fitzgerald Gerald, if you want to say it, because I think he is that good. Precise route runner. I mean, great plant steps. <clears throat> Excuse me. He will get better as he does go on, and I think that's part of it as well. I want to see that route tree be elite in nature, something like we see from a Keenan Allen. Very good play strength as well. Very tough to bring down, and he is very elusive on those screen plays, especially for a guy who's 6'3". He does it extremely well. Number two, Malik Neighbors. Six foot two, 138 games, 189 receptions, 3,000 plus yards, 15.9 on the average, and 21 receiving touchdowns. Malik Neighbors is another elite wide receiver prospect that we can all get excited about. Yes, we know LSU is the wide receiver U, turning out guys like Jamar Chase, JJ, OBJ, Jarvis Landry. We know the list, man, and it goes on and on. Now you got Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas to add to that, you know, resume of fantastic wide receivers coming out of LSU. He's elite in nature, man. Just absolute playmaker. And then tape speed is just elite. I would have loved to have seen him do some stuff at a combine and pro days. But, I mean, we'll see what happens in that respect. We want to see what he does, uh, you know, measure out on the 40 time, measure out in the cone drills. But the tape does translate extremely well. Uh, athletic ability is just unbelievably off the charts. He can contort his body also any which way to make a play. His leaping abilities, like he's floating in the air when he's trying to get those passes. Very good in that sense. Athletic ability is top end, man. Turn up, change of direction, acceleration is elite, man. Once you get the ball in this man's hand, he turns up field, and he's gonzo, man. He's that good in that respect also. Very twitchy, fluid running style. Love that about my running backs and wide receivers. If you're so fluid, you look like you're just floating on the field and dancing. So good, and he's very twitchy and fluid in that sense as well. Route cut burst, absolutely fantastic. When he's uh, planting his step, and then he goes to take off to create... Uh, 
create separation. Malik Neighbors does it with the best of them. Very good in that respect. Tracks the ball extremely well with ease. No question about it, whether it's over the shoulder, whether it's the back shoulder, whether it's the jump balls, whether it's, you know, the, the deep 50-50 balls. He's attempting them, and he's able to track it extremely well. Again, no combine for Neighbors. Just listing it as, I wish I would have seen something in the testing because it does round out everything you want to see about your prospect. But Malik Neighbors, definitely true elite prospect talent in the NFL draft, man. Number one, Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah, we know this. <clears throat> Everyone's getting what? Uh, NFL draft fatigue because Marvin hasn't been participating <clears throat> in any of the drills, any of the uh, pro days or combines. He's a uh, elite of elite, man. No question. 6'3", 209, 38 contests, 155 in uh, receptions, two, uh, 26, 13 in yards, 16.9 in the average, and a nice 31 touchdowns. Marvin Harrison Jr., back-to-back -back seasons of very similar statistical achievement, 1,200-plus yards, 14 TDs. Harrison is very good. We'll start with a no comp no pro day. This is what is dictating the issue for a Marvin Harrison Jr. Why no combine? Why no pro day? And like I explained in his scouting report, if you want to go check out his report in depth, excuse me, the video is definitely down there for you guys to see. But Marvin Harrison, I think that they're trying to do this their way. Marvin Harrison Sr. and his camp are definitely instructing him, you're a top three prospect anyway, why risk it on the field and make a mistake to lower your stock? He is the best wide receiver in this class. Do not get it twisted. He is pro ready. Great size frame. Tape speed is absolutely fantastic. Turn up acceleration for him is also elite in nature. Body balance and adjustments absolutely perfect. Toe drag swag. He will make those grabs in the end zone he will be the mismatch one-on-one -on -one unguardable is Marvin Harrison Jr. I mean you got to always have somebody else with him you put a Marvin Harrison Jr. on your team you got an instant wide receiver one on your offense for the next 10 to 15 years without question hands are fantastic snags the ball corrals it in no slapping off the hands separates with ease he is just that good I love Marvin Harrison Jr.'s game and anybody that's trying to you know make the debate to say who is the best wide receiver in this class I mean I mean, I understand why you would make the arguments to keep the conversation going, but Marvin Harrison Jr. is definitely the top uh, dog in this class at wide receiver. But there you have it. That is my top five wide receiver power rankings for these rookies as we are about a month away to this NFL draft, and this class is uh, supremely loaded, no question. Like I said in the beginning, you're going to get a high-quality talent as we get down the board, even on day three in this NFL draft. But nevertheless, as always, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, jump in those comments, Give me your thoughts. Who do you guys like? What's your top five? Throw it in the comments. We can definitely talk it out, but we'll see you next time. I am out.